ladies and gentlemen, I fixed the problem. And we will not have any more of those, as I got everything back into the right position. Continue on with what you've said, by the way. Uh, the game's good. And I'm sorry that I'm slightly ahead, and it's bothersome to watch. But... Trickiest Gaby is going to try and use that stealth and get a good pick. He does land the Poison Slow on Thresh, on Thresh, on Wa. The Flay does land, and somehow the Death Sentence goes wide. Tons of damage being traded out, but Ooh, nothing's going to happen. Close. Yeah, pretty close. I think, I think I fixed the issue here. Just seemed to be a little bit too high on the bit rate. I think that means everything is back to a better set now. Okay, good. I'm actually watching and uh, I'm casting at the same time. So good stuff. Very good stuff. Glad we got the technical difficulties figured out, but at this time it looks like there's going to be a game pause. Well, I kind of wish I got something like that earlier, but it is what it is. <laughs> Okay, so game so far has been pretty even on the farm on both sides here. Zach's got a smaller farm lead in the jungle here, but and Twitch has gotten a much larger um, farm. Oh no, it looks like that problem still is persisting after all. Okay. Seems like that problem still seems to be going on after all. Not exactly sure why that is happening. Very, very weird stuff. I'm gonna... Maybe you have to get some technical help later, but everyone's starting to just... Um, hopefully, I'm getting some assistance here. Jeremy's giving me some suggestions. Let me go ahead and try to lower some quality down. Maybe that'll work out a little bit better. Okay, game quality is a little bit lower. Maybe that will do the deed here. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to uh, have such weird, consistent issues so far. See Hall gets caught into the CC here, gets rooted, and will end up going down as well. Got the first kill for his bot lane right now. Karma's got some kills as well, but if you want to get somebody fed, you better make sure it's that Ash who really needs to get as far ahead as possible. Yeah, and being behind in CS in a winning lane is just not something you want to have happen. Yeah, it's extremely vital for Ash to get ahead. If they do not allow that to happen, we're looking at an extremely late game coming for Decimate. Again, banking everything on Ash being the savior of this group. Butterchunks is now having to deal with a lot of saplings. As the saplings seem to be farming for Malachi here. And this is the kind of drink you want to have quickly. Decimate takes the first one, and the next one appears to be a mountain. For De As Decimate takes an early drake. It's the red flavored one. What do you call that one? Uh, red is red flavored Kool Aid. Cherry Kool Aid cherry or red Kool Aid. Kool -Aid. Mm, sounds good. I should get me some cherry Kool Aid. Yeah, uh, some vision being cleared out on top lane. Both uh, top laners going with the triple Dorn's Ring start. Um, and a little bit of magic services for Butter Chunks there. Afrolit takes the blue, doesn't give it to Impulse, which is weird because uh, you want to give it to your mid laner, especially since in this matchup, um, Malzahar does have a mana advantage, seeing how that every Malefic Vision that kills a uh, minion returns mana back. Interesting. Yeah, I remember. I know that. Not to mention, um, not to mention the fact that he also has the item that every level he gets, he gets a. 20% of his mana back too. So Bomb yep. Ride's just going to be good forever and never really need a blue buff for a while or any point in this game if he continues to farm really well with that E. Skull is clearing out some control words on bot lane as Butterchunk's continuing to try and be aggressive in that top lane. Just throwing blows for blows these titans of the top lane. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't expect it to be anything less. That just seems like a big old slugfest between those two. I don't think that at any point either side is going to really get the upper hand here. Um, have you ever seen that uh, band drill video about um, Malakai and Galio like fist fighting, or is it like 
a Nautilus in... in Ooh, oh, Flash okay. engaged by Pun Pride, using his ultimate and definitely getting that one shot off onto that jungler. Yeah, that caught me right in the middle of that. I wasn't even expecting it at all. But on the top Archer's side, got Open nowhere to go. He's rooted between two heavily CC champions. He does squirm away, but gets rooted again, again, and Butterchunks is going to go down, looks like, to Kaloon. No, to Oblivic. I thought Kaloon had him. Well, it looks like Kaloon did make sure that he gave the kill to his top laner, which is what you want to see happen, especially in that matchup. If he did take that kill from Zack, or if Zack did take that kill, it's going to make it really hard for Maokai to even do anything versus him. As you know, Mal as Galio is really good at stacking match resist. A little bit of BM coming along by the audience so far about Pun Pride. They don't, they're just saying how good he is at pressing the R button against that Galio. I mean, against that Gragas. Taking a lot of damage. Ash starting to really hurt. Building accordingly and just trading well. Wah is on a signature champion. He's a really good ADC. I've watched him a couple games now and uh, I'm really liking what he does, but I'm excited to see what Twitch brings to the table still. Not quite I mean, opening at, up. At this stage, they're basically asking Wa to carry the game for his team, really. They built a team around Wa, so they want Wa to do the job. So, I guess that's exactly the plan of attack here. I mean, usually it's Punfroy gets fed, uh, fed and in ahead of situations, and then Wa is secretly fed and does a lot of damage. But this time, it's not a secret. They are making it confirmed and known that Wa is going to be the carry for their team. Well, you say that now, but uh, the only person that has kills... Well, I wouldn't say the only person. Um, technically, Karma's carrying, but... I'm a a deep engage from Kloon, trying to get the less bounce on to the enemy team, but kind of puts himself in a bad position. Gives Death Sentence under turret, see all landing a great hook, and Afro Lip being in a good position to make this one count. Butterchunks does get to the bot lane, charges up his taunt. Another teleport in response from Maokai, he also using ultimate. Ultimate's flying for both teams, there goes the box, and Wah goes down, and so does Twitch. Double kill for Maokai. Triple kill for Maokai. Oblivik is popping off. Oblivik's looking for a Quadra here. He's moving into position. Kramer, if he can just move a little bit faster, might be able to get the leash necessary to hold down Butterchunks. He's trying to get into the right spot for it. Butterchunks uses the taunt. The leash is on. Oblivik is going for the Quadra kill. He's just about in position. The root hits, and he will get the Quadra kill, even though it's unofficial. That's a Quadra kill for the top laner. I'm pretty sure Ham Cam's got a love hearing that. A top laner with a quadra kill. Oof. Ill oh, to... That was almost all five there. That was almost all five for Oblivic. That was a unofficial penta that almost went into Oblivic's favor. Not quite an unofficial penta, because Pound did decide to ult and get the kill with the Malefic Visions, but it was a sketchy ultimate to ult under the tower, but you can't say sketchy if you come out with an ace. And, uh, yeah, really good play by Maokai. Like I was saying before the game started, uh, top lane is getting some really good play because of the flanks, and that was exactly what you needed from your Maokai. Good teleport flank, and, uh, played it really smart. Good, um, prioritizing targets. It wasn't just about the kills, it was the priority targets. First Twitch went down, then the support went down, and then the top, then the jungler, and then the top. So, really yeah. well played. Good job by Oblivic. Really impressive, impressive performance, continuing his streak of being a dominating uh, force out here. It looks uh. like some extra damage onto Impulse as he is now dealing with a bunch of range. I don't know what, why Impulse thought that was a good idea. He just allowed himself to get ulted there and killed, and that will be Pun Pride's second kill here. Oh, Cut the framer. Wait, oh no, the Q is off, the kill off target. And that means that Twitch will not, actually still doesn't get out of there. I thought Kramer might have made the mistake that allowed Twitch to escape, but I guess I was wrong. Wog nope, still makes the kill happen. 
They laid the CC well and the auto attacks in and out of the turret between the two of them, and they made sure they put the damage into him. When you want somebody dead and you know how you have the damage, sometimes you just have to go kill that guy. Mm -hmm. Tons of stuff going on in this game is looking like there's an early domination in damage coming out for but wait on the bot lane while under turret. Versus the turret is very low, and it looks like Wah's gonna go for the first blood, and does take it, but will be in a really bad spot, he's gonna go down for that. I think that was still worth it for Ash. does need to get fed, and that's one of the ways to do it, just get yourself two kills and a half for that. I, you know, I don't know, in this day and age, is it really worth it to die for anything? If you got the tower, you're gonna get the tower eventually, first blood tower was in your grasp, uh, I just don't think it was worth it to die. I can see your point of argument. However, mid lane tower is really low. If Ash did make the back, I'm pretty sure Malzahar was not going to um, was not going to allow that tower to go away freely. They might have Pump Pride might have been the one to secure it, and I still refute the point that I think Ash getting extremely fed might be the better option. Yeah, I mean, you can't get extremely fed if you're already dying now. You have three deaths, and that's the most on your team. If if you want to be extremely fed, you can't have the most deaths on your team. Zach does go for an elastic sling sign gauge on Sion. Gets death sentence in. There is a Maokai ultimate explosive class to break up the fight. A little bit of dispersion as Oblivik is trying to just be a good front line, and they seem to not want any more of this. Try and disengage. Death sentence is landed on Blovik. Ash arrow from Wa does land on impulse, and the fight continues. On the tricky, trickiest gravy goes down by Oblivik, and this fight is very, very long. I gotta admit, I was expecting some bursts to happen at some point, but neither side can really burst the other, and cooldowns are just coming back up on everybody's side during combat. And finally, it looks like Zach has finally gone down to the ground. Uh. I feel like it's it's still really interesting that Oblivion gets a kill and still gets out with his life, as they are pinging the Baron right now. Baron, uh, uh, you know, me. at this point, Oblivion might want to start thinking about a carrying build the way he's been playing so far. Wa is going to go right after him, uh, a defenseless impulse, and impulse is going to have to let it happen. That's too much slow to deal with. A a, a red buff plus a um. Uh, Ashlow is way too much to handle. Looks like they didn't even realize it. Sneaks the in, sneaks the herald right from out from under that bot lane. Yeah, I mean they knew that Oblivik went back and they didn't have vision on it. So um, Impulse just played like the decoy game and he paid for it with his life. As Afrolit gets the Rift Herald and summons it top lane with four members on the top lane, they're gonna get a good push off this. Let's watch the initial burst as half of that turret goes down. Zach does engage right onto the back line, but wait a second. Seal is so low. He's so squishy. This game misses a flay. But wait, there comes Oblivik getting into the middle of the fight, dominating as he gets another kill. Pump Prize and Malefic Voice Visions get another kill, and boy oh boy, there's another double kill for the 8 0 and 2 Maokai. Somebody stop that guy. He's unkillable and unbeatable right now. It's looking like there's this clear victor in this game. I don't know what like I don't know what happened or why, but my stream is just really, really poor. I hope I didn't just like I hope at no point I ever made fun of the way your stream has ever been in my entire... Like, because your stream is actually really good as a whole. I hope I never oh insulted that and that karma jinx had gone onto my computer. I hope that's not the case. I hope this is some I, other issue. I feel your pain, bud. You know I'm a small streamer and uh, I have... I have similar quality issues. I have a high standard for myself and it looks like they're gonna start the Baron buff. The trickiest gravy on that Twitch is gonna try and maybe sneak up and do something with that ultimate that he's got laying, but nope, not in time as the uh, Baron is secured. Yeah, Butter's now caught in a bad spot here against two tanks. Butter's got nowhere to go. This is the repeat. No, they're gonna let Butter out of there. Huh, they decided to let him go. <laughs> 
pun smartly backs off. There were just too many members uh, of the enemy team, and he just didn't want to get picked out of position. Just give up the tower and the position on the tower and wait for your backup. Good timing on the backup. They clear the wave, and they actually don't lose anything off of it. They get the Baron, and they don't lose a tower. Uh, I feel like uh, they're getting choked out of this game really easily. Yeah, despite the fact that they have a kill lead and a Baron and the Drakes, Decimate Legacy is not really pushing their advantage quite as as efficiently as other teams have with Baron. I mean, I mean you, you I say know. that, but they're 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 clearly winning at the 21 minute mark. If we were to look at the gold disparity, it's massive. Um, Ten thousand on the nose. Actually, yeah, ten, uh, so, close to that actually. Never mind. Say ten thousand. <laughs> uh, there is the ultimate from Maokai just to push them off. They really try and want to get the objectives going as they empower these uh, minions with the Baron buff to continue the siege on the mid lane. If I were them, yeah, a one-three-one strategy. No, actually, it looks like they're doing a, a split. They're going a two-three strategy. Huh? I would have suspected a one-three-one here. But I guess they just don't trust their escaping ability here, and they're giving Oblivic the mana for his carrying uh, so far. Yeah, doesn't sound like a bad idea to give it to Oblivic. I mean, he is Oom, and they want his front line to be continuing the front with Baron buff. Trickiest Gavey is going to use the Spray and Pray just to clear this Baron and Parrot minion. I mean, it's only 22 min two minutes into the game. Not everything is over yet. If you guys can stall, there's a chance you guys have a better late game team comp. So hopefully, do something. But it looks like Decimate Legacy is going to try and decimate the enemy team. <laughs> a little bit of uh, mastery spam on the way out. Cost Kramer doing a good job sweeping as they rotate to the Wind Drake. Man, Oblivic has possibly um, a better start than any top laner I've seen so far. Gets himself a almost a pentakill, just unkillable in every situation. Able to make some good killing plays here. Be able to buy all the big tanking items right off the bat. Just and his farm, although on a little bit on the short side, still is a really um, dominating force in this game. As you can basically count him like near 200 farm because of all those kills. Yeah, I mean, 200 farm at 20 minutes is about as pro CS leveling as you can. Sea Hall is going a lot wide on these Thresh Lanterns. They're just prepared for it. For the Flash, engage from Afro League. Explosive class goes in. Cost Kamer getting taken out as Kloon does land the Let's Bounce. And All right hits on, onto Galio here. Some extra kill seems to come through as Malzahar and Zach are getting some good damage in thanks to their Infernal Drake. But Pun Pride has to use the ultimate for self-defense, does manage to keep himself standing, and that's an extra kill and ace against. Oh boy, that one snuck right past me. I almost forgot I almost forgot who's on who team. NES had been uh, caught off balance there. I didn't think that I didn't think Pun Pride was gonna keep that ultimate for such a long period and uses it to self-defect himself against the Galio to keep himself standing, and that'll be a in-hip grab. Yeah, uh, just really smart play by Pond Pride. If you have the ultimate for the entire team fight, you could use it on anybody. You could use it to start a fight, or you can use it to finish a fight. And that time, he used it to finish the fight. Um, okay, Pond Pride's uh, gonna grab himself a small wave. I thought for a second... He could he could have died to it if he if he took that very carelessly. Uh, you know, Pump is going under the radar because there's a whole lot of Maokai tree love, but he's now 7-0 and 5 with 223 CS out laning his opponent impulse yet again. Yeah, and everyone in the chat the has been uh, giving him a little bit of disrespect so far, but he's been doing a really good job as a whole. In the mid laning positions, he's been selected to do so. Really good job out of him. He Very good. the same thing on the same on different champions. He's got the same Rabdon Skef Cap, Leandres, and Morello Namacon and cooldown boost like he built on the Velkas. Interesting. Right. And 
coming into this game, Decimate Legacy has got history together, but a as well as a, a good coordination of uh, of teamwork and trust. Oh, never mind. I guess I'm going to have to forget about what I'm talking about here. Another team fight coming in. Oh, man. These team fights are really wild and out of control, but when... I don't think... I don't think that Galio could even do anything. I think he actually got up and got himself a drink because he knew he was done for when all that CC hit him. Oof, less bounce does take impulse from in the safety of his base to out into the goons of the enemy team. This appears to be the final stage of the game here. It's estimate Legacy is about to close out the game. They're going to position themselves accordingly onto the Nexus. The suppression comes in and Wall has done the damage here. The net they're going to go ahead and do some spawn killing in the base as it looks like the final Nexus can no longer stay alive. Decimate wins the game for game two and wins the series. A really good job to Decimate Legacy, um, playing again to your winning conditions and putting your carries in a good position to win. Um, surprising. I just want to interrupt you for a brief second here. I want to apologize to everybody at home. I am extremely sorry about the lack in quality in the stream. This is extremely, um, uh, a really bad news for me. I'm going to um, get figure out a way to make this a lot more for your viewing pleasure. So I am extremely sorry at the lack of quality and the lack of uh, viewing pleasure for everybody. Extremely, again, very 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 sorry i do want these games to be very entertaining we got the casting people talent that makes these games very fun and interesting but i do want you guys to watch it i want you guys to have as much fun as possible and it is very fun to be casting with everybody and have you guys hear it and have you guys like this stuff i'm just doing everything i can to be and make it as best as i possibly can and in the in the future we'll figure out a way to make it a more viewing and better streaming method, even if it means finding people that have the equipment to do so. But if it doesn't have to be that way, then it doesn't. We'll figure out. Um, we'll figure out what we can do for next time here. Thank you very much to everybody who's given me all the assistance, especially you, Crazy Chris. Thank you very much for all of it. I really, really appreciate everybody's help and everybody's honest opinions. Thank you. I appreciate you, but I think let's go back into appreciating yeah. the winners of this game because this is what it's all about, guys. This is why we're here. We're here to see the dank League of Legends action. So kudos goes to Decimate Legacy for winning the series 2-0 against NES, Notorious Gaming. Um, yeah, what a standout performance by both teams. I want to appreciate. I want to just say thank you to both teams for giving it your all. I know it was a little bit of a rough start there, but um. It really was good games because of it, honestly. A little bit of extra friction makes for good gaming. You know? Ooh, another another very poor warding coming out of the AD carry again. Four wards this time, and no wards cleared out for Twitch. Very piss poor performancing. Very, very piss poor performancing yet again. I thought it would be a lot more of an improvement coming out of Gravy, but still no warding increasing whatsoever and you can see his kill death ratio seemed to be quite a strong drag down as he was supposed to be a very good carry for their team did not work out in their yeah. favor in, in my day we just called that a heavy teammate hard to carry but he did pl he did play as to his best of his abilities mm -hmm. he used his ultimate at the right timing when he was in a good position i just feel like he didn't get himself in a position to win. I mean, you're an invisible champion. You kind of just want to get in and try and stealth on some people. Um, unfortunately, there was a couple of uh, Sea Hall um, thresh hooks that were just a little bit wide, even some that were point blank. It was quite quite unlucky or just maybe outplayed. Were they missed or dodged kind of Un situation? Unlucky outplay is the best way I could put it. <laughs> um, yeah, Our, but Armin, what so do you think about... Yeah, you I know, guess... question. I'm going to ask you. Uh, what do you think about the uh, player of the game, or I guess the player of the series, or you the know, guy... the audience has been quite against stacking against Pun Pride, and uh, we've been also giving a little bit of uh, lack of credit to uh, everybody as a whole. I mean, look at that Zach at one one and seventeen on the assist. Kaloon. Mwah, mwah, beautiful stuff. Absolutely incredible <laughs> stuff out of the jungler. I, I mean. 
I, I want to give honorable mention to Oblivic on both both the series as a whole and playing the Maokai. You played really well, um, but if you have to look at the series as a whole, I think hmm. the you know I what I mean. I, I, I see. I see what you're slugging. That's why here, I'm telling I... you. That's why I'm telling you. There's a there's a player of the game, and then there's the series as a whole. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not entirely swayed exactly. I feel like Oblivix just as much in the running as Wa and Pun Pride are, including Kaloon. All of them did a very good job as a whole and as a team. They did a great effort, really. So. I don't know, man. I don't know. This is a really tough call here, and I fear that we... I don't think we can even say one person specifically. Pun Pride, however, did an incredible job in both games being the carrying mid laning, despite both the times he... Well, but despite first time, he did get killed, but he did continue that damage proccing, and he did do a good job with his skill shots. He did the same thing in game two. So we are, the audience is cutting him short, and he did do a really good job. However, we've been overlooking Wa at the same time as we've been overlooking Kaloon and Oblivic. So, your opinion here, what do you think? MVP, uh, sorry, not MVP, a player of the series. Player of the, if I had to take a look at the series as a whole, I would have to say player of the series is Pun Pride. Um, two unique champions, um played very well on both of them positioning you had the most gold this game you, you, you got to look at the series as a whole this game oblivic did well last game you know what oh geez maybe we should get a straw poll on this one because um it is it is kind of nail bitingly really, close it's really close it's really close i i feel like as a team they are so, very well. bef but before we make a final decision here, before we make a legitimately final decision here, I believe there's some music that needs to be played, and that has not been played at all yet. And yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get that started here. It get is the victory. Pun Pride's victory, so Pun Pride and his music is going to be played right now. I hope you guys enjoy. With no effort. 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 I could do this shit with no effort. You know I do this shit with no effort. I could do this shit with no effort. Nigga, uh. shoes took a house. I took your bitch, took that whole the time. Play my role so good. After I hit, I took a ball. Take some pounds for a pile. Take your time, take it serious. I'm curious. Should I buy me a watch or an aquarium? Get your sack took, we gon' take you for a joke. If you like that last batch, bring some money, take some more. Wanna take them to the eight? Don't know it's right. I wanna take the country. Wait four years, we take presidents every day. Nigga, take me to the horse, not the club, bitch, the porch. Holding took off with my dick, I should be taking her to court. If you take me for a hoe, I'ma take it to your porch. Only fear the Lord. Anybody else can see the more. Give me 30 seconds with her. I can get this bitch naked. One bullet out that K a leader tough Well, I think that just about sums that song up in a nutshell. I guess that's uh no effort. That's the kind of victory he definitely got out of that. So, no effort, says Pun Pride. What do you think about that? I mean, he's the captain of their team, and he's the carry of their team. And I, I'm going to personally have to give him the player of the series for this one. He did he did more than his part. And going Double deathless down on the fun in pride. this game, deathless in this game... What more can you say? I it's so close. I can you're you got it. There's so much. How evidence. about we break it down to two picks and we'll Deal. just vote on it. Deal. Two picks. Deal. So I can tell you the two that I think should be two picks, and I would have to say Obliv and Pun. Okay. I was actually gonna say Wa and uh, Wa and Pun. That's what I was gonna say. Not Oblivic. Although Oblivic's if, quadra kill did throw him into the ring, I think Wa and Pun Pride are just about equal in the carrying position, especially in both games. So Wa and Pun Pride, what do you guys think in the audience here? Let's give since this is a um a little bit of a, a test here, I would love to see a bit of a voting here. Who won MV? Uh, sorry, the player of the series. Who won player of the series? Give a vote. It is between Pun Pride and Wa. It's too narrow, it's too close, and to be fair, you gotta take a pick. So who gets the uh, player of the series here? 
I need to hear a uh, pun prior or wah. I am getting a straw pull set up if you give me two seconds. We got a little bit of voting for Kramer here. Cosmo Kramer is getting a little bit stronger on the MVP side. I mean, the uh, player of the series side. Here we go. A little nice straw poll would be absolutely great. Please get yourselves into the straw poll. Let's have our vote come through here, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of a, a bunch of new things. A straw poll would be great. Please place your votes in the straw poll in the link in the chat. It would be great to see what kind of uh, who is going to get MVP based off of these two. All right. I believe that's uh, enough of that song for now. Good stuff here. Let's see what kind of thing do we got here. Yeah. Votes seem to be quite even here. No new votes coming in. Seems like the votes are beginning to shift towards Pun Pride. We'll give it a little bit of extra time. But it sounds like Pun Pride has got the voting so far. Seems to be doubling down right now. The voting seems to be reshifting back to equal here. Maybe we should have had a third one there just to shake things up a bit. But You, you a, bring a good point. Cosmo Kramer seemed to also get a voting in here too. Let's see. I mean, to me, it's clear enough that the majority are... You can't on, say the majority. Yeah. More yeah. people yeah. think yeah. that pun... He's going to be the, the Are you telling me we're going to have to get him back in here so he could continue to be just as cocky as he's been in every single game right now? Are you telling no. me crazy Chris that Pun Pride has once again for the first time in Duo Esports history got MVP for 2 weeks in a row? Is that what you're telling me right now, crazy Chris? Yeah, I think so. Uh, for me it's not, okay. it's not that Yeah. Okay. I mean he, 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 he called out every other team in this league. And I think if you're watching this and you're in this league, you gotta you gotta watch this guy. Watch him like we watch him. Tell me he's not good. Okay. Alright, so you know he's kind of a celebrity, so you gotta take He's get kind him. of a celebrity. I guess we gotta bring him in here. Um, bring him in here. Yeah, I guess so. Pun Pride, you've doubled down on your victories, you've doubled down on your wins, and you've doubled yourself right into another week of the MV, uh of the MVP, as I'm being told by my boss to say MVP. <clears throat> Sorry, Crazy Chris. I do like your method. We'll have to have a meeting about it. I do like the way it is. But for MVP. now, it, 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 uh, it Dota just told me about it just now to say MVP. I don't know if it's a contract thing or not. But anyway, Pun Pride, congratulations. You have earned yourself the first ever two-week-in-a-row MVP. Your song, no effort. Let's see if that reflects your opinions, man. Come on in. Let's have ourselves an MVP conversation here. For the first man to ever reach two MVPs in a row. I'm going to move him over. Um, please join the general uh, lobby when you are ready to go, man. Let's have this conversation. And when you're finally all finished uh, with whatever it is you're, whatever it is you're going through. Um, yes. And now I can move you right into the chat lobby since you are ready to go. Finally. Uh, whoops. That's not what I meant to do. Pun Pride, nice to finally get you in here, man. Thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations, you are the first ever two duo MVP of Duo Esports. Huh. Congratulations, man. Thank you, friends. Two in yeah. a row. Impressive. Yeah, good, good job. I just want to, you know, initially say congratulations. And how do you feel on the victory, friend? Easy money. Easy money. <laughs> Double it down, double their chances, double their reward. Pun pride, your song, no effort. Does that really reflect how you feel about that last game? Nah, I was trying hard as fuck. <laughs> good, good, good to hear, good to hear. <laughs> Pun pride, man. Seriously, congratulations. You won MVP for two weeks in a row. Really solid job out of your part, man. Nice. Really great and stuff. We got some questions for you here. Hope you don't mind answering a couple of them. Uh, I guess I'll start first, unless you got one quick question for him. Um, crazy. I mean, you're the first ever 
the two-time MVP in Duo Esports history. Um, what is the comms like on the on your team? Like, what, what who who's the shot caller? Are you making all the calls or like what's going on on the team? Uh, it's mainly just me and Osmond Kramer, but everyone just checks on their opinion. That's awesome. That's awesome. How do you feel being the two-time MVP? Uh, same as usual. Ooh, okay. Good stuff. Good thing to hear that. Um. So we, we kind of kept with the pretty basic stuff when it came into last time interview, we interviewed you. We kind of like, we get that to the general talk. But I think we can get a little bit more advanced this time around, considering you won the second MVP. Your bell cause was picked, uh, you were picked it for game one here, you dominated with it. And it got picked against you. Um, now, everyone in the audience was kind of voting against you, as they, di as they did last week. You seem to be getting a, a notorious reputation here. Are you switching sides? Is that what I'm hearing? You going to depart on Notorious Esports next? Or are you sticking with Decimate? I mean, it seems like they need me, so I'm down. <laughs> good. Oh, that's good news. Very good news. So, man, um, last time, last week in your interview, you also mentioned that you were a... Uh, support and you were asked to play mid lane now that you kind of got comfortable into the mid lane position are you saying you're a mid laner now uh yeah i was a main top before but oh I main top. Anything. sorry sorry i must have gotten that confused my bad main top interesting okay um so uh i guess we can get on to uh the next final set of questions here but i just want to say that like your team has been pretty great so far. Decimate Legacy has had their ups and downs, but they've been pretty good on the standings right now. And those two wins are going to really put you guys out in front. So, really great job out of that. You guys feel like you're putting the right hours of practice, right? Good hours? Uh, yeah. We usually scrim two times a week. Nice. I've been hearing you've been scrimming against your, your uh, next week coming opponents, too. Do you, I think I heard something about that through Jeremy, although I think I just read that from the chat. Not entirely sure. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, I believe, is the captain of Guardian, uh, sorry, not Guardian Gaming, the um, uh, ESG Gaming. And I believe that's your next week opponent. I'll find out for a fact. But um, that being said, Pun Pride, you've been a very dominant mid laner so far in these series, especially since you've ever since you moved from the mid spot, man. Um, are we actually going to get you again for week three? Are you going to keep this streak going? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just mid lane now, so. So it's guaranteed? We're definitely going to see MVP yeah. for sure? You're gonna MVP every week. MVP every week. You called it, and you're going <laughs> to you're gonna commit to it. On Pride, I do hope some more good fortune for you, because you have been just, your team and you have been dominant. And I feel kind of bad because Wa and Oblivic, they did so well and so did Kaloon this game. They really yeah. gave you a run for your money. My whole team, you my whole team did well. Yeah. Very well. And they I'm all, proud of them. Yeah, they all deserve the MVP, but you just keep yeah. stepping ahead of them. You guys finally gonna let that happen to someone else? Oh, sorry. Crazy. I mean, choose a different MVP, I'm done. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if, if you had to pick an MVP for your team, other than yourself, who would you pick? Uh, I'd probably pick uh, Cosmo Kramer. Cosmo Kramer? Yeah. He's he the did. best player on our team. He did. Just because he's sport, he gets a little bit less of a True. MVP consideration. I mean, but, you know, I'm only alive in team fights because of him. Right? I'm just sitting there, mm -hmm. as I said last week, pressing buttons, and he's shielding me, healing me, warding for me. You think I drop wards? Fuck that shit. Fuck wards. He's warding for me. <laughs> Uh, I think you got like a substantial amount of more wards than Trickiest Gravy, who only put down three wards, or was it three wards this time? Yeah, it was three wards, four lord, four wards in the last game. You are putting down wards despite um, the uh, despite what you said here. Um, well, I try. You do, and you succeed. You just barely outstaged the rest of your uh, your peers so far. Just barely, though. You guys are improving as a whole, and you guys are definitely looking like a solid. Uh, performance. I'm I'm going to be pretty excited to see you guys make it into the playoffs. You guys are definitely getting close to that type of tier of talent, and it's going to be great to see you against some other opponents here. Love to see some matchups against Guardian Gaming again. That would be great. But for right now, 
You guys have been you guys have been absolutely awesome. Pun Pride, congratulations yet again. And I hope your team might be able to upstage you next week. We'll find out for sure. Hey, thanks. All right, see Have you later. Good night, boys. You too, man. Later. Thank you again. again man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like um, a little bit of love has been spread around the whole team this time around, but Pun Pride says he still wants to be the MVP. So good luck, Cosmo Kramer. You are still in the run for the money here. Anyway. For the uh, final stuff, I gotta I gotta say this, um, everybody. Thank you very much again for being a part of this stream. Thank you all for giving me all the assistance you can possibly get. And I am extremely sorry for what uh, the visuals that had happened in the game. I will do whatever I can to make it as entertaining as possible. And I'm glad you guys like both me and Crazy Chris for our efforts this game. So, I guess I should finish off with this. My name is Army Overlord, and with me was... Crazy Chris. Thank you guys very much for everything you've done so far in this stream. It's a really late one. I don't think this will ever happen again. But, thank you all very much. I'll see you guys next week. But, as for next time, Crazy Chris, I believe you are going to be having a stream tomorrow, in fact. <clears throat> yeah, I think I somehow got tricked into, slash coerced what? into... What? <laughs> no, I'm excited, but I will be streaming and casting by myself tomorrow. Um... Who would dare trick Crazy Chris into doing such a, a, a noble and fun deed like streaming? Come on, man. No, nobody would trick you. That's impossible. <laughs> it, it should be fun. I'm, I'm a little bit excited. Um, it should be a good game, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll be there. Will you? I will watch if I can get myself a way to do so, but I will be very busy on Sunday. Good luck, man. I hope you have a lot of fun. See you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye. Peace.